What is it this time? Hey Joseph, how are you feeling? Well, just great. Now that I have the oh so wonderful pleasure of serving you. Hey everyone, I'm Rahi Patel, and in this video, I want to explore the world of voice assistants. To help with that, I programmed Joseph, the bitterly sarcastic robot. Hey Joseph, what's the cube root of 81? Wonderful. What an excellent use of my existence. 4.32674871092. Idiot. But this is a sort of technological hat trick. I didn't spend very much time programming Joseph, while teams of engineers have spent years at giant tech companies to make Siri, Alexa, and OK Google. What gives? Why does Joseph seem much more dynamic? Well, it's probably pretty obvious I just program him to hear and say specific things. But this wouldn't work for Joseph's counterparts who get so much more hate for being dumb. My goal by the end of this video is for you to learn enough about the design of voice assistants to have empathy for Siri, Alexa, and OK Google. Here's the general design for all of them. First, your voice gets captured by the microphone. I want peanut butter. The computer then converts the sound waves of your voice into words. Once it has a sentence, it tries to figure out what action you want it to take and what the subject of the action is. Then it needs to figure out how to respond. Does it need more information or is it all set? Finally, when it knows what to say, it needs to convert the text into speech. Rahi, you're allergic to peanut butter. Oh, right. All of these steps are extremely difficult to pull off, and some of them have their own fields within computer science. This first one is the field of automated speech recognition. This one is the field of natural language understanding. Both have been researched for decades. This step involves the field of dialogue management, and this one is text-to-speech. But I want to focus on the first two in this video. Here's a task for you. Look at this waveform of my voice and tell me what I said. A bit stuck? That's basically what we're asking computers to do. Maybe you can create a kind of dictionary where a word is matched with a waveform. For example, here's a waveform of me saying the word pineapple. With this information, you can easily recognize that I probably said pineapple here. We can get computers to do this kind of pattern recognition fairly easily. If I had a dictionary full of words, I could probably figure out what I said in this sentence. This technique would never work in practice though. Look what happens when I say the words in a different location. Pineapple or a different accent. Pineapple. <laughs> or if someone else says it. Pineapple. There are countless more issues like these that software engineers need to solve. That's part of the reason it's been taking them decades. Joseph can actually do this pretty well. What is it this time? Pineapple on pizza sucks. But that's only because I took automatic speech recognition code from Google. All I have to do is tell the code what microphone I'm using, and it'll do all the speech recognition for me. Thank you, Google, for making your employees do this and only giving them free snacks, breakfast, lunch, dinner, music rooms, game rooms, lounges, high salaries, and healthcare in return. Please hire me. Now comes an even bigger challenge, programming the AI to understand what I'm saying. The easiest way is to brute force it, like I did with Joseph. If he hears the words, what time is it, in that order, he'll respond with the time. But any other form of the same question. What is it this time? Hey Joseph, what is the time? He actually does that. Look, the issue here is at their core, computers are just fancy calculators. They can do math and that's about it. Everything needs to be literal and procedural. If this, then this. There's no room for nuance but language is full of nuance. Luckily, over the years, computer scientists have figured out how to get around this. Let's say we want to program our voice assistant to do different things. The first is to say what time it is, and the second is to say what the weather is today. There are probably hundreds of different ways to ask each of these questions. You can't possibly program all of these in, so you need to figure out another way. Here are six different verbal commands. Three to ask for the time, and three to ask for the weather. Each sentence goes into this block of code and comes out as a chain of numbers. Usually, each chain has hundreds of numbers, but for simplicity, we'll say each one is assigned with two. 
you can think of these numbers as coordinates. Let's call this block of code the coordinator. Let's call this block of code the cork coordinator. Let's say this sentence passes through the cork coordinator and receives the coordinates 9, 8. I'll put the sentence back for reference. Now I run this sentence through the cork coordinator and it receives the coordinates 1, 2. When I do this for the rest of the sentences, all sentences about time end up in this region, and all sentences about weather end up here. All of this is done by engineers on a large but limited number of sentences before the software is ready to use. Now they can draw circles on this graph and say if any sentence goes through the cork coordinator and ends up with coordinates within this circle, give the weather. If it lands in this circle, give the time. If it lands anywhere else, say, I didn't get that. Before the voice assistant is commercialized, engineers put it through a training phase where they pass in as many sentences as they can. In this phase, they adjust numbers in this model and things like the size of the circles to try and make it work as well as possible. That way, when it's being used and hears a sentence it's never encountered before, it can make a pretty good guess as to what the person is asking for. In real life, this block of code is actually called a machine learning model. This is why you should cut Alexa, Siri, and OK Google some slack. They don't actually understand what you're asking them. They're pre-programmed to only do certain tasks, like find the location of something, open apps, and so on. All their software brains are trying to do is take the verbal command you just gave it and figure out which pre-programmed task you want it to do. That's why stuff like this happens. OK Google, Pineapple on pizza sucks. My apologies, I don't understand. Well, first of all, pineapple- There's no circle programmed into these things labeled, have a debate about pizza toppings. If you really want to hate on a voice assistant, hate on Joseph. He's absolutely inferior. He's not backed by decades of research in machine learning and natural understanding. He's programmed to listen to a command, check to see if it matches word for word, and respond with a sarcastic pre-programmed answer. What is it this time? Hey Joseph, who's your favorite YouTuber? It's Mark Ropper. He's so much better than you. You will never be like him. He's gone. <laughs>